All this is Dr. Mobin Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So today is actually the beginning of the long weekend, and this is my attire for the long weekend. I wanted to make sure that the discussion I did yesterday, I think I um, I made a mistake in interpreting interpreting the data, and it is important considering the topic: pregnancy, uh, neonates, uh, infants, uh, embryos that are developing. That we should try our best to make it keep it clear. Number one. Number two, I have always said that if I make a mistake in my interpretation, then that is on me and I am responsible to fix it. So that interpretation, I would explain where the confusion is. However, I want to make sure that we look at the corrected data or my side of the corrected data and we are comfortable with this. I realize that with, with correcting it, there will be so many folks who would now unsubscribe saying you, they thought I'm an anti-vax and now I'm, I'm taking care of a, a pro-vaccine position. Many who would uh, put very angry comments and so on. However, this once again is important for me to make sure that this data that I present is interpreted correctly. So um, as much as some of the cool beans come upset. I still think it is important for, for me to correct it. So let's start. And also, no, nobody overnight reached out to me from YouTube or from Big Pharma or from vaccines or CDCs or FDAs and threatened me. This is my need to make sure that what I talk about is accurate. And that is because I'm a medical education. I'm a teacher for medical education. I run a business for medical education. And it is important for me to keep the data correct. So let's start. It's not an opinion piece. This is not a journalism area. This is an area for the medical concepts. Because of that, it is important for me to be on the right side. So here, this is drbean.com. And this is the paper once more. Again, Tom T. Shimabukuru, MD, which we have heard about him many, many times. This is the paper and conclusion. Their conclusion is that they did not see any safety signal. I was upset about this yesterday that I thought that in the first trimester, they were being deceptive or inaccurate or incorrect and maybe made a horrible mistake or maybe were naive or maybe just uh, try to deceive or uh, create a different perception. So I still think that there is a sentence, a couple of areas where they could be better clear or they should have been better clear. I would show you that, but I don't want to put it on them. First, I want to correct my side of the mistake, and then we'll see where they le left the things loose. So let's start from a little above the uh, topic here. So I'm going to now start from here. This is the table number three and the data there. And this is what I'm going to present. So let, let me just very quickly explain uh, what the error was yesterday. The error was the following. So I'm going to look at this data in a second. Let, let me explain the error. Error was that imagine in the first trimester, so we divide pregnancies in various trimesters. So first trimester, second, third plus the uh, spontaneous abortion or miscarriage is defined as spontaneous abortion or baby's death in the womb by the week 20th. So 20th week, so let's say the first trimester is 12 week, second trimester is 12 week, and third is 12 week, of course, give and take, but generally. So first two trimester make 24 weeks. However, by 20th week, if the miscarriage occurs or the death of the baby occurs, then that is called miscarriage. The data that we looked at yesterday was they had collected this data from vSafe and some from Verse from December 14th to February, I believe 28th. So December, January, Feb, somewhere over here. Feb 28th. In this 
time. And it is not necessary that many of you got it wrong and I'm explaining it to you. I'm correcting my presentation. I'm sure that many of you were already aware. So in during this time, they vaccinated various pregnant persons, women, uh, transgenders. And in that group that was vaccinated, there were some folks who were some, let me call them women for the time being, and please don't mind. Uh, it just makes it easier for me to express it. No offense to any uh, transgenders. Uh, so let's say the, this group that was vaccinated contained people, uh, women from the that were in their first trimester, even women that were around periconception. So second trimester, third trimester. Now, someone who is in the first trimester will not have their pregnancy or delivery till the nine month after. Second trimester, of course, maybe let's say anywhere from six months, three to six months and so on. Correct. They were talking about the completed births or completed completed pregnancies, which meant either the woman had delivered the baby and completed the pregnancy, or unfortunately, the baby was lost, and hence the pregnancy was completed. Now, it is understandable that in the first trimester, whoever were, let's say, a 1,000 women in first trimester, in January, we were observing them. Of course, if unfortunately they lose a baby, that will be known within this window of time if they lose the baby within that window of observation. But if their pregnancy is still continuing, we do not know if they would lose the baby or not. Generally, as the pregnancy continues, the chances of losing the baby reduce. So majority of this, the miscarriages occur in the first trimester. And miscarriage is defined as something that occurs before 20th week. That means those who are vaccinated in their first trimester, we cannot really say what were the final outcomes for them until they all reach the time of the delivery or the full nine months. Of course, in this group, the first trimester, if anybody did miscarry, then they are out. Their count is done. They had, that was one person pregnant and they lost the baby and we are finished. So that is one and one. However, if there were a total of thousand and there are, let's say, 100 that miscarried, then there are still 900 to be observed. And maybe let's say at the eighth month, there are another 10 that miscarry. Then from this cohort, if we just wanted to observe this one, now we have 110 total miscarriages. Or if we wanted to see the abnormalities, or if we wanted to see any other effects, we still have to wait for the whole uh, completion of the pregnancy. This is where my error was. If you think about it for a second with me, look at my error. Again, I'm not saying you were at error. It was me who presented it incorrectly. My error was that I said, well, they are saying 96 or 104 people who have miscarried or babies who were miscarried. And then they are all in this area. So that means that people who miscarried were majority the first trimester. And that means it's really bad and it is 82%. But actually, if you think about it, the remaining 900 people are still not counted because their pregnancy is not complete. So they are not going in the denominator, number one. Number two, sometimes when we are, um, one of the way that we count miscarriages is to actually see the completed deliveries and then say majority occurs in the first trimester. But overall, here is the number. So in that case, you don't go by trimester. You go for overall numbers. So the authors had actually shown the overall numbers. 
my interest still is in the first trimester. The reason for that is that the first trimester is the most common time of miscarriage. And let's say if the vaccine was doing anything wrong in terms of, let's say, some people said sensitin protein or inflammation in the uterus or spike proteins doing something or some placental perfusion issues. If these were happening, the chances of this negative outcome continues to reduce as the pregnancy's duration increases. So that means even when we have some data for third trimester, it is more important to look at the data for the first trimester. That also means that even when we can understand overall picture, it will still be very, very much interesting to see what is the picture for the people who got vaccinated in the first trimester. And I think that from this data, we can have an, an understanding of what may be happening. So this was my error. So let me now explain the data that they have and where the data and the messaging looked odd. So here is where, let me show you the message where it looked odd to me. So I'm going to go here for a second. The thing that threw me off and naive thing, and that is my mistake. Look, here they said spontaneous abortion. Then they said lesser than 20 week. I think that the reason they, so when you read this, when I read this lesser than 20 week, so I said, oh, so they're talking about the abortions in the first two trimester or the miscarriage time, but they are dividing the denominator is for the whole uh, set that includes 700 people of completed pregnancy who got vaccinated in the third trimester. So that seemed incorrect. So if I was the one to go back and give the author a feedback, I'll say down here, either remove this 20 to less than 20 week and put that as, as a subtitle here to say most occurred before 20. And I can understand why they would want to put lesser than 20 over here. They would like to, I think, they would like to clarify that, hey, if vaccine was causing miscarriages, then those who received the vaccine in third trimester would also have a higher rate of miscarriage. And we can show you that there is zero miscarriage in that group. That means vaccine is not doing anything. And then because majority of the miscarriages are in the early part, which is the standard, uh, not standard, but where it is seen more, we are showing you that it is seen more over there as well. That could have been an explanation, but here spontaneous abortion lesser than 20 weeks, I would have said spontaneous abortion in the overall group in, or in all completed um, pregnancies, which is the number here. The second part which created the confusion, and again, although they have a lots of footnotes, this, I'm not clear that this was deliberate on their end or they thought they clarified it and the people like me still fell for it. Here is the other one. A total of 96 of 104 spontaneous abortions occurred before 13 weeks of gestation. Now here, they may actually be thinking that this is a good note to make because what they're saying is that, hey, it is expected a larger number of abortions occur in the first trimester. And that is what we saw as well. Again, if I was there and articulating it, I would say, hey, for the first trimester, we actually do not have completions of pregnancies for all that were participating for the first trimester and vaccine. So we cannot really just focus on the first trimester and tell you what happened to those. But we can tell you overall, the number did not change a lot or actually are, is within the range of normal background abortions. That means that first trimester did not cause any, any increase. So there could have been a message like that, which could clarify it. So I do not know what was behind 
uh, the thinking that they articulated it in this way. So now let me just explain the data itself now. Here is the data. Data is the following. First trimester, 1,132 women. So 1,132 women who were in their first trimester got their first dose of the vaccine. So that data is here, 1,132. Then if you see here, 1,714 were in the second trimester and 1,019 were in the third trimester. So 1,714 in the second and 1,019 in the third. So these are three groups. And they are looking at all of them together from December 14 to, to Feb 28. From this whole group, 827 pregnancies completed, out of which 712 were live births. And we can expect that these were majority, these third trimester folks. There may be others, there may be premature births as well. But this would be those three th folks who are in the third trimester and were due for the delivery and they delivered. Other are still either they're delivering now, some of them, and some would continue to wait till their time is due. Then this is the other part that they said 96 of the abortions, spontaneous abortions, occurred in the first trimester. And here is where I think authors dividing this number, total number of 104, with this number, and then saying 12.6 is fine, but the message should have been that this is the overall loss of uh, pregnancy, and that overall loss of pregnancy is within the background range. When they put this lesser than 20 week, that creates a perception that is different. So now let's look at it, what they're saying. They're saying 96 people had aborted in the first trimester. But please realize it was not out of 120 that I did the math that, all right, 700 live births from the third trimester, the remaining 127 are between first and second. I actually said first. Actual number is here, 1132. And we have to wait for that number to complete to actually see what is the right percentage. So this percentage, if I was back there, I would have said, please correct the verbiage to say this was overall pregnancy loss and it is within the range and majority of that occurred as expected in the first trimester. That could have been a message that somebody reads and says, oh, I understand and compare it to the standard and then say, yeah, it makes sense. Now the second part, can we actually just take the first trimester's pregnancies and then look at that number and see what happened to those who were in the first trimester and what was the effect of the pregnant uh, vaccine on them? We cannot yet. Why? Because they have not reached the completion. If we just focused on that one group and said, we are very much interested because if the vaccine is gonna cause some, let's say, um, abnormality in brain development, or abnormality in cardiac development, or some other abnormality that would cause spontaneous abortions. And so we are very much interested in this group, in this cohort, more than the cohort, which is let's say in the third trimester, because third trimester baby is for a major part formed. So if we wanted to see this, then we have to wait. We have to wait till all of these pregnancies are completed. And then we can say what is gonna go in the denominator and what is the final loss of uh, pregnancy. That data is not available. If I was there, once again, I look at this table and I'll say, this data is not available to just look at that one cohort, but overall we have this data and it looks like it is within the normal range. So this is the correction. I hope it makes sense. Once again, this, 
I still feel that should have been articulated correctly. Now, interestingly, if we assume, let's assume for a second, if we assume that all who were in the first trimester and got the vaccine, and here are the spontaneous abortions, 96, and the, all the rest will reach full delivery safely, if that is the case, and we are only focused on that and we ignore everybody else, then the case would be 8.48. Let's say at the end of the day, this actually increases that, that 96 to 100 or 104, 5, 110. Then this number would increase a little more and that would still be within the correct range. On the other hand, second trimester already is showing a smaller number. Once again, if we suspect that folks who got the women who got the vaccine in their and they were in second trimester and they were 1714 and we assume that only eight losses of pregnancy are seen and that's about it and not, nothing more would happen or maybe one or two more i hope nothing more then that percentage is 0 0.46 which is lesser than between one to five. So normal standard background loss of life over there is one to five percent. So this is actually way low and it might change. However, at this time, this is the number. And the third trimester, those who received it in third trimester, at least there is no number for them because they said all of these spontaneous abortions are lesser than 20 weeks, which falls within the first two trimesters. So that is a discussion. I hope it, it makes sense. And I wanted to make sure that I, I corrected uh, my message at least. You, this, you take the vaccine or not is your decision. I feel that the first trimester's data is still pending. Uh, you, um, you think it is OK to take it in pregnancy or not, your decision. But at least I did not want to come across bringing data. I just don't want to misinterpret data for such um, sensitive topic and then say it's OK and just uh, move on. So I wanted to make sure that I take care of it. I have made the other video that I talked about yesterday. I made it unlisted so that once we have this, I'll attach this video to that as well. Tell me this. Anything else? And <laughs> I totally understand that some of the folks will become very angry with this. But we, so Neela Das is here. Among 1132 participants who received vaccine during the first trimester, follow up had not been completed for 1040 participants. Their outcome cannot be assumed either way, isn't it? That is correct. So what they say in their uh, numbers that, hey, we are still following up. So if I go back here to your point, Neele. And thank you very much for helping me through this. And thank you for the other folks as well who have been helping. So see here, they say, among 1,040 participants who received the first vaccine, so they have done follow-up for 1,040 so far out of 1,132, which is fine. It That would change that number of 96 upwards. I wish it does not, but that would change that number upward. Not a lot. So going back to Neela's question, 1132 par participant, yes. 1040 are followed up so far, yes. So there is <clears throat> another 60 plus 32, 60, 80, 82. I'm sure that they are actually doing that follow up now. There must have been more follow up. There may be some up updates coming up. So. Um, Felicia says, give it five years. Felicia, uh, I am not once again going to say that it is a good thing or a bad thing. My position is known to everyone. There is a, a mistake that I made, which I wanted to make sure I correct. So again, I'm not sitting here preaching, you should take a vaccine, you should give the vaccine, um, you should be not happy with the vaccine or happy with the vaccine. That's not the point. I made a I did a discussion in which I was mistaken to represent the data. It is, it is fair for me to correct it. It is my duty to, to correct that.
<laughs> Gold Country says, just found this and I'm starting at the beginning. <clears throat> Flower says, I'm so glad that miscarriage rate is not higher. That was terrifying. Absolutely. And look, this is an important thing. Um, when I started reading the rest of the paper, so again, there is a mistake that I looked at part of the paper. I usually don't do it. I actually look at multiple studies and multiple books and mechanisms. I made a mistake yesterday. But when I looked at the paper, the one, it was just, just important to correct. And secondly, I felt bad that who are pregnant with the first trimester and maybe got the vaccine, what would they be thinking? And people would be forwarding my email to them, my video to them to say, watch this, or their, their family members. So it was just not right. Um, so I think it was important for fixing it. So Denise is saying, Dr. Bean is quite good with learning as he did when initially said mass cells were permanent one skins only. I expect we back to differ, which obviously learned further. Thank you. <laughs> I learned, we all learn. Um, Frieder AD says, colchicine is taken post messenger RNA vaccine for myocardial my pericarditis prophylaxis. Can it somehow affect vaccine efficacy? Colchicine. I don't know. I'll have to look up the mechanism. Leticia says, you are just giving information. People need to do the research. And well, as well, what I see is people do not research. And uh, uh, Leticia, there, there is a trust as well. So some of the folks who listen to me and don't do research is because they trust that I have done the research. And that is a trust which I place on many people as well. So. It is then my duty that if I have a gap in my understanding and I find out, there could be gaps in my understanding that I don't find out. And then it's just, I don't even know. But those that I find out that there is a gap, it is my duty to come back and correct it. <laughs> James Newman says, "You may, maybe you made the mistake on purpose to see if we were actually paying attention. Yeah, that is good. That is how it was. <laughs> I still feel that they could have explained it a little better. I don't know why they were putting those uh, lesser than 20. I think they were trying to say that this definition of miscarriage is still applicable and the the number of miscarriages are within the expected time and so on but the clarity was not there. It was, uh, Jan says, thank you for the correction, Dr. Me. You're welcome. Flower says, no credit given, or did you not see my comment last night with this information? Flowers, there are many who did that. Uh, I did not see your message, but sure, if you helped as well, thank you very much. There were more um, folks as well who were making comments. I think Dr. ESB, SB, there was Cyber Funk, there was Doug, and I'm sure there were more. I did not read all, all of the comments. So I'm sure you were there as well, and credit to you too. Barbara says, you're an impeccable data analyst, Dr. Veen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Barbara. And clearly, I made a mistake yesterday. And I know um, how the mistake occurred. I did something which I normally don't do, and that is look at part of the paper. Cindy Glasgow says, what was the percent of first trimester loss in this patient cohort pregnant loss? So let me show it. And again, I'm going to be careful. This is exactly the problem that I'm, I'm correcting. So I hope. I don't speak incorrectly once more. Sid, so Cindy, first trimester, 1,132 people who were pregnant, who were in their first trimester and got the vaccine. Out of them, or people who got vaccinated in the first trimester, 
the the report says that out of 104 miscarriages 96 occurred in the first trimester folks so i would connect this 96 to the first trimester because this is that number however as i thought yesterday that this is 82% 82% assumes that that 104 is here let's say first 20 weeks plus the total number was 127 which was the mistake the number is actually this number and why this whole number is not shown because this number is not completed with their pregnancy yet why did they put 827 because they wanted to give us an overall picture but then they articulated it narrated it incorrectly and at least i fell for it so uh cindy back to you 96 1132 this number if let's say we freeze it at this time to say everybody else will have a safe complete pregnancy then 96 over 1132 is 8.48 normally the first trimester has abortion rate of 10 to 15 so this is actually within the normal range even below the normal range but again we are not we are not looking at the whole picture yet so i think this was not the right thing to do on the authors but they wanted to i think they wanted to say that hey people who have received the vaccine in the first trimester there was no negative effect seen that the whole the, the number of spontaneous abortion count became too drastically different or similarly folks who received the vaccine in their third trimester did not have any spontaneous abortions and were able to safely move forward with their pregnancy. So I think th this is the message they were trying to create. It's just that, as you can tell, here we are. OK, so <clears throat> Nicholas says, you're a star. Well done. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I know that I'm going to get a lots of uh, sub unsubs now, lots of unhappy comments now. but. Think about it. I am not sitting here being a opinion head or a talking head or a journalist or those fringe groups. I'm sitting here doing medical science thing. And this is as much as I'm, I'm unhappy with myself that I made a mistake, I have to correct it. It is the right thing. So Trevor says, what do you think of mixing mRNA vaccines? It's becoming more common. It is actually good. But they did the, although the study that was done in UK, they mixed adenovirus and mRNA virus based vaccines. And I think they had a reason for that. They were trying to see if a woman had adenovirus based vaccine, can she be given messenger RNA vaccine now instead of the adeno because of the clotting issues? And they found that side effects were a little more intense, but immunity that was created was similarly robust similar to homogenous vaccines. <laughs> Christine says, now we won't need a three day Dr. Bean withdrawals, just two days. So uh, this is, I haven't shaved yet. This is my slightly less formal uh, attire. And I just wanted to make sure that I can get uh, and bring this. I didn't want even some pregnant women in first trimester who may have had the vaccine to stress out for two days because I was on a vacation. So I just wanted to, I hope that if my previous video was sent to them, then this video is also sent to them. So they, they don't stress. <laughs> awesome says, so early preg pregnancy isn't good for the vaccine. No, uh, it's not the pregnancy good for the vaccine. The vaccine, at least in the data, it shows that the vaccine does not cause harm in pregnant women. Dr. Z says over 500 of us watching. Yes, uh, yes, that is correct. And, <laughs> and listening to Dr. Mobin's mistake and correction. Uh, Jelidoni says, aren't vaccines contraindicated? 
first in first trimester anyway. Also, my decisions always evolving. Thank you for your honesty, but I did not think it was a mistake. Just misinterpreted. You are awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, so I was thinking about this this morning. If I had my daughter-in-law, my sons are in that age. If I had my daughter-in-law and she was in her first trimester, I would ask her to take care of herself as she was taking care for the rest of the year and not go for a vaccine in the first trimester. So that is me emotionally speaking from other knowledge and from medicine. From data point of view, the data says there is no additional harm. Gems by Jackie says, Dr. Bean, I'm glad I found your channel. Thank you also as someone who loves to make art. I love yours. Thank you very much. And uh, I love art. Um, I, it, that's just the way. This morning I was talking with my son. My son and I, I think we are very similar. When we have vacation, we cannot rest because we don't know what to do with the time. So um he said what do i do i'm i'm sitting here and it's it's uh, it's days off and uh he was getting bored and i said look i paint or i become busy in sort of not work work and so i was saying he loves music so i was saying maybe play music or paint Letitia says, I always appreciate when a doctor is admitting he has been made a mistake. This tells you. To, I try to be, uh, meaning maybe I've made more mistakes that I don't, I'm not aware of. Flower says, oops, I meant to remove that. Sorry, I was really worried. Oh, I didn't even see. <laughs> so I don't know. Did, did you yell at me? I didn't see those uh, messages. Today, I'm going to get yelled under this one. Because now the folks who do not like vaccines are going to come and say, you were under, you were attacked by someone, you, you were sold out, you became a shill, uh, pharma companies got to you, and stuff like that. And most of the threats would actually come from them. But there is nothing like that. It is just an honest mistake I made with the data, and I want to make sure I clear it. Jilidoni says, thank you. I have a newly married daughter. Very good. Congratulations. So Aaron says, hi, Dr. Mobin. Do you think we should worry about ADE with COVID or is just anti-vax care? So I did a discussion about ADE, five mechanisms of possible ADEs. And I had discussed the studies in which they actually tried specifically SARS-CoV-2 in a lab environment to do ADE with human cell setups, and they could not produce it. So I don't think ADE is something that is a concern. Barbara says, consider, however, that clinical impressions are also important to honor, even though the data appears to indicate that there is no statistically significant risk. Absolutely. Clinical is very, very important. Mary says, Dr. Bean is wonderful to explain and give information. Thank you. Um, Mary Evil says, so if a woman got Moderna vaccine and in a year or so she wants to get pregnant, would it be any problem with the pregnancy? No. I have done this discussion before that they, this uh, thought that women become infertile is not correct. And um, my wife is super, super private. But she had um, changes in her body function after the vaccine for at least two months. And now she's back to normal. So um, <clears throat> just know that it, it won't. <laughs> Gems by Jackie says, Dr. Bean, I am somewhat new. Can you let me know what your stance is on ivermectin and the vaccines? I personally am very skeptical. Looks like ivermectin is very promising and that if it is very widely X. So Jackie, I think 
I was the one in the US to start talking about ivermectin the first. From, from the, uh, if we look at the history, the Kali study from Australia, then Dr. Tariq Alam from Bangladesh. By the way, we'll have Dr. Tariq Alam with us in a few days next week. Uh, he started using ivermectin. Then I started talking about ivermectin here. I think in March, April time frame, my first videos were taken down. Then they were brought back up. Um, then other folks, FLCCC, Dr. Pierre Corey, Dr. Um, um, Paul Marek, and others picked it up. So this would tell you how excited about ivermectin I am. And I use that on my patients as well successfully. And I'm a Provax. So th this is what some people cannot reconcile that why does Mubin talk so much about uh, ivermectin and is a pro-vaccine person as well. And I can tell you what their point of view is. Their point of view is this. If ivermectin works, that means if I'm taking ivermectin, then the virus will not cause any harm to me. Then why do I go and get protection? And I always talk about it. Ivermectin's prophylactic efficacy is not 100%. Neither is vaccines, nor is correct vitamin Ds and masks and other things. We have to just keep doing whatever we can to protect us. It is your comfort level. I cannot tell or ask you to do a specific thing. I can only present data. And if I'm mistaken on the data, I can only correct it. But I cannot ask people to do uh, what they should. They, they would decide what is best for them. Then he says nothing is 100% absolutely. Liza is here. Liza, how are you? So Liza says, uh, we do have to consider that many pregnant people are not exposing themselves to other diseases, which could result in miscarriages. Do the doctors consider that in their paper? I think so. So that is why they kind of said that here is the standard background levels. And here is what we are observing here. Of course, miscarriages, this was the point of seeing this. So here is where we could have said, hey, vaccine caused it. If, let's say in the first trimester, the background is 10 to 15 percent. And as we suspected yesterday, for example, that, well, it is 82 percent of miscarriages, then that would have been attributable to vaccine. And then we would have said there is a problem, as I did yesterday. So the numbers that we are seeing are not high, even for the first trimester and the number of people who 1132, although they have not completed their pregnancy, but still their initial. <laughs> this is my wife, I think, outside playing with Luffy. So <clears throat> it does not look like extra. Brent says, you should compare these results with results of tests before COVID and the vaccines. Then you would have a true comparison. And that is what we mean by background background numbers. Um, the background numbers are the numbers without this vaccine or numbers that are observed in general population. Doug, how are you? We've been missing you. So Sammy says, have you seen about 10,000 doctors and 1,000 lawyers working together to halt the vaccines due to serious concerns? I have not, but there are some uh, vaccine side effects that are serious. So again, when I'm sitting here correcting my mistake, I'm not saying that vaccines have uh, magically become all good or they have magically become all bad. For me, it was, it was important to talk about something. I avoid discussing pregnancy, babies, neonates, embryonic developments, just because I feel that is a very sensitive area. So once I spoke and I made a mistake, I wanted to make sure I correct it. <laughs> logic says one dislike equals anti-vax and not wanting to hear the truth. So logic by this evening, you would see that it would be filled with folks and I would see a dip in this subscriptions. There would be a lot of fallout. 
but that should not stop me from presenting what I uh, correcting my mistake. Okay, cool. So here we are for today. Um, MSAs, what was the correction? MS, the correction was that the data that I interpreted was incorrect and the numbers are in the normal range. So there was no harm observed so far. So Robin Hood says, would it not be a good idea to remove the video with the mistake? I will. So I wanted to make sure I do this video, and then I'll remove that. Otherwise, uh, I thought people would think that because I did an anti-vax video, YouTube took it down, and that was censored. So I wanted to make sure that I present the mistake. And now when I take it down, it is me who is taking it down. It's not censorship. OK, so <laughs> Luffy <laughs> and Doug says, Mrs. Bean impersonating Luffy should have guessed. Yeah, so you heard some some sounds. Some uh, I think she was playing with Luffy and making bird sounds for him. Uh, so with this, let's stop. Please like, subscribe, and share, especially this one, because there's going to be lots of dislikes as well. And uh, also, if you want to support this work, uh, there are three links in the description. One is to use PayPal to support this work. Other one is if you don't want to use PayPal, you can get coffee, or you can be a patron. And thank you to everyone who has supported. Thank you to all patrons. And I would see you on Tuesday.